Sightings of big, hairy beasts roaming the wilderness have kept us wondering, what is really out there? But without hard evidence, you might as well be talking about, well, King Kong. Until now. One researcher has discovered something so convincing, you can't help but wonder whether these creatures really are living amongst us. I've traveled all the way to a remote area in Washington state where there has been sightings everywhere and recently a huge discovery that could change everything we know about Bigfoot. And I'm about to meet the guy who is the Bigfoot expert. The Olympic Project is a group of biologists, scientists, trackers, uh, wildlife people, basically trying to learn everything we can about the species that we're already sure exists. I think what fascinates me about the research is it's unknown and it's just an amazing, like almost an unsurmountable challenge, you know, trying to, to figure out something that most people don't even think is real. I can't help but notice your big foot molds up here. If it's something that a hiker finds, if we find out about it, we'll go out and take a look at it. And then we'll actually take plaster of Paris, pour the cast and wait a couple hours and lift it. Okay, well I didn't come all the way to hear about footprints and the odd sighting. Now it's time for him to show me the goods. This is actually one of the bigger nests that we found right here. Very thick. It is seriously like a mattress. And if you can see in the middle right here how it's so depressed, there's actually a spot for legs right there. That's huge. It is huge. This, this nest actually measured over eight feet long. It looks like a giant bird's nest, the way it's circular, and everything is laid in. All these tips were broken off, gathered, and transported in the nest built. It looks pretty comfy. It does. <laughs> it's like sitting down in an easy chair. <laughs> Have these nests been found anywhere else before? Oh, that's the amazing thing. Yes, uh, Africa. Oh. <laughs> these are identical to gorilla nests, and that's what's so unbelievable. Whoa. Did he say Africa? Gorilla nest? Now things are getting interesting. This whole area is known for Bigfoot activity, so do you want to take me out there and maybe we can have a look? Absolutely. Let's go. We've actually found tracks on this trail before. because tracks are extremely significant to the research that we're doing. Legitimate Sasquatch tracks are very, very rare because Bigfoot is rare. They'll avoid leaving tracks whenever they can. So they're pretty smart. They're extremely smart. Are they dangerous? I would say yes. We're looking for any sign of Bigfoot, you know, as, as far as a crossing, major disruptions in the foliage, tree breaks. Do Bigfoots have a smell? Or do I think they smell? Absolutely. Covered in hair, living in this environment, they're gonna have a stench about them. So we are standing right where you found a Bigfoot track. This was about nine and a half to 10 years ago, and there were two perfect tracks right here. And uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I cast them. You did? Yeah. And how big were they? They were about 16 inches long. Whoa. You have been studying Bigfoots for over 32 years. This must be wild for you because even right now, you're finding the biggest discovery yet. Things feel like they're coming together. You have to be extremely patient to do this research, you know? You're looking for something that most people don't even think exists. Well, we didn't find Bigfoot, but I am curious about those nests. I want a second opinion. Bring in the professor. Well, I'm Jeff Meldrum, and I'm a professor of anatomy and anthropology here at Idaho State University. How did you become involved in Bigfoot research? I was exposed to uh, the subject when I was a youngster. I was shown a long line of remarkable footprints, 35 to 45 tracks in the mud that were just astounding. That being my area of expertise, human locomotion, footprint evidence for bipedalism in the human fossil record. I became very fascinated with it. You have people sending you evidence of Bigfoot from all over the world. Mm -hmm. In addition to footprints, I get stacks and stacks of envelopes with, with hair, and some of these turn out to be remarkably interesting, sometimes uh, scat. I tell people, unless they found the scat between two tracks <laughs> and it's still steaming, don't bother sending it to me. <laughs> We've received some uh, thought out specimens and secretaries don't appreciate getting a, a dripping box uh, of a specimen for Dr. Meldrum. Have you heard about the Bigfoot nests that the Olympic Project have discovered? So here's another nest right here. When I first heard about these, I was fascinated. It was sort of showing the girth of the vegetation, but to have vegetation that's literally broken off the surrounding trees and, and shrub layer. 
woven into a, a ring quite methodically. They certainly don't resemble what the typical bear nest. The degree of dexterity or lack of dexterity in the paws of a bear, they're basically just going to pull leaves and litter and so forth into a pile to make an insulating layer. But this reminds me of tree nests that gorillas and chimps and uh, orangs make. Where they bend the boughs and they plait them together. And it's actually a fairly complex skill that the young have to learn. So to see, see that type of behavior here uh, is, is pretty interesting. And, and you know, one can't help but think that uh, it points to the behavior of a large primate. Like a big, hairy North American ape? Sure, we still don't have proof, but it might just be a matter of time. Why do you think Bigfoot continues to be so elusive? Why don't we have more substantial proof of it? Well, there's not a, a real easy answer. I mean, for me, the bottom line uh, really is the rarity of this creature. But eventually, it will happen.